Last time on Dragon Ball New Age. With their backs against the wall, Vegeta would be the one to propose fusion, ushering Gogeta to the battle. Although at first it seemed promising, Rigger's power would mysteriously double, putting our heroes back at square one with only five minutes remaining for their fusion. <laughs> and at this point, he's right. There only remains about five minutes left for the fusion. Rigger snarls, he's waited for this for so long and won't waste such an opportunity. After all, it's very likely he will never get a chance to fight at his full power ever again. So his adversary here has earned this. He beckons if Vegeta can hear him inside that fused body to announce the time for justice has arrived. For the murder of his mother, it's only fitting he dies by her favorite technique. Although, he has never fired it at this level of power. He could erase the entire planet or even solar system if he doesn't control it properly. Maybe the whole galaxy. Causing a shot Gogeta to argue he can't fire off something like that on Earth. The planet can't. The rigor bellows over him, barking he just watch him. Seeing this maniac is willing to destroy everything to satiate his bloodlust. He won't allow him to do such a thing. Even if it takes all he has left, he will stop him. With one final boost, Rigger knows he should have figured he was hiding his full strength. He cackles as Foe must have realized that without it, he has absolutely no chance of defeating him. Big Bang Kamehame! A dull ending would have been so unsatisfying! This is the fight I wanted! Die! Ah! Final beam struggle commencing. Rigger states he's been tremendously impressed during his little visit here, holding out against him like this. But the question remains, will he overpower Gogeta's attack and kill him outright? Or will the fusion run out and he'll kill him anyway? Either way, Vegeta dies and justice will be done. Rigger commands his foe not quit on him and push through his limits. Not too far away, Rigger's wife can't believe she's feeling such force from so far. The other power is only barely holding on. It's merely a matter of time before it falters. He feels despite however much power he puts into it, his enemy keeps pushing back. At this point, he's tapped out. He's given up too much ground and doesn't have anything left, admitting he can't stop him. Even the Kai see the same. As the brother of Vegeta spouts, since it appears his foe has nothing left to give, he can prepare himself for oblivion. Something snaps in the villain. His body feels like... With a series of audible pops, it seems Goku's statements have come full circle after all, and his body can't handle this consistent level of power. Vegeta senses his foe suddenly let up on the blast, knowing he can't waste this opportunity. No! Damn you, Vegeta! Deafening silence emanates across the battlefield, as only the gasping breaths of Gogeta can be heard. The fusion finally giving out. Vegeta stutters to his rival, he never wants to do that again. The pair descend to the ground completely exhausted. The fusion used up all their energy. But at least it's over. But Kabuto Kai's confused, questioning his elder what happened. Rigger had all but won. Although he himself is a bit hesitant to say, he supposes it's like filling a balloon beyond its capacity. Eventually, the balloon will burst when it can no longer handle the pressure. Rigger's body just folded under the strain of his rising key. In his effort to overwhelm Gogeta with brute power, he wound up overwhelming himself. Noticing his rival in a state of silence, Goku asks if he's alright. The prince comments how his brother only came to this planet because of himself. The blood of those who died today is on his own hands. But what if he isn't the only one? How many other horrors will his violent past invite to this world? Giggling, Goku can't help but point out how much he's changed. Alas, tells him not to worry about it. As long as the two of them are here and they have the Dragon Balls, the Earth will be okay. The duo stand. Vegeta suggests they begin heading back. Although they've lost too much energy to fly, they may as well get started on the long walk. Goku admits he probably couldn't fly even if he tried right now. Just where do you think you're going? 
Rigor emerges from the crater, albeit bloodied and back to his base form. With a sinister smile, he questions what's wrong. It's like they've seen a ghost. Our heroes have to wonder if he's immortal or something. He took that attack head on. Nonetheless, the invader declares he will have his vengeance. He will. Though his words fade away as he collapses to the ground. Goku and Vegeta do the same in relief. The former exclaims, well, that was a shock, as the prince wonders aloud what he's made of and if anything can kill him, asking his thoughts on what they should do with him. He doesn't rightly know, thinking maybe they should just leave him here for his wife. As Sapari arrives less than happy, she scoffs that their luck must run in bulk. The fact they still draw breath after fighting her husband is no small miracle, and to defeat him. The gods themselves must be watching them closely. Never before in his lifetime has Rigor suffered such a defeat. While she should exterminate both of them right now in honor of him, to deny him his vengeance would not be fair. As a Saiyan, she still respects the code of the warrior. Their lives are forfeit to him. She vows to Vegeta he's not finished with him. Clicking her scouter, she uses voice commands to call the pods to her location. As they arrive, she silently places Rigor inside. But before leaving, she shoots the pair one final cold stare, promising one day Vegeta's luck will run dry and he can't escape justice forever. And with but a glimmer, one of the most powerful foes ever faced departed the earth. And our winded heroes, with all they've lost, have earned a brief respite. Happy that it's over, they decide it's time to head back to the others. Then once they get the Dragon Balls, they can fix this mess. But as one threat is turned away, the worst has yet to come. In the Makai Realm, left in chaos with the absence of King Dabura, deep in the Demon Lord's plundered castle lies a vault that has remained unopened for 12,000 years. A trio of thugs ask if this is supposed to be some kind of joke. This is what they've been hiding here? It's nothing but a corpse. But. This is no mere corpse. This withered husk is a prison for an ancient, unimaginable evil. And for multiple millennia, this evil has slept and dreamt. Dreamt of this day. The day it would finally awaken and return to the mortal world. Aboard an aircraft, the duo detail the events of the battle for Bulma. While they are all hurt pretty bad, Goten and Oob, they didn't make it. She replies how awful it is for Vegeta to have family he's never meant to hate him so much and to do such things. He comments how Rigor's strength was vicious, unlike anything he's ever seen. Leaving the question, does he think he'll come back? But he doesn't know. It wasn't skill or power which bested him, only dumb luck. Trunks adds that regardless, he thinks their first priority should be to wish back Goten and Noob with the Dragon Balls. When an ethereal voice penetrates the plane, it apologizes to interject like this, but using the wish orbs is out of the question. Old Kaioshin. Goku being the one to guess it. He instructs them to listen to him, and not to think him insensitive as he indeed grieves for their loss. But he's afraid he must put his foot down on this matter, forbidding them to use the Black Dragon Balls ever again. But for what reason? Does this mean Ub and Goten are gone for good? And what are the consequences in using them to bring Goku and Piccolo back to the world of the living? In a panic, the gang questions what exactly he's saying, but he means just what he said. No using the Black Dragon Balls. Goku argues they've already used him once before, so why? Shouting, Elder Kaio interrupts to beckon if they've listened to any of his warnings about the Dragon Balls at all, grunting how aggravating Earthlings can be. He had hoped the Shadow Dragon debacle would have taught him a lesson. These Black Dragon Balls are just as dangerous as any other set before him. Our hero reminds, the dragon himself said they won't make Shadow Dragons, so what's the problem? But the danger doesn't lie in the frequency of use, but the use of them at all prompting a simultaneous reaction from everyone aboard the plane. Old Kai explains, the original Dragon Balls of Earth were created by a good-hearted Namekian, the one called Kami. But the Black Dragon Balls were created by his other half, the evil King Piccolo. This fact alone makes them fundamentally different from any other set of Dragon Balls. With the origins of the Black Dragon Balls revealed, how have they remained active for so long after the death of their creator? And what other surprises are our heroes in for with the events in the Makai Realm, also known as the Demon Realm?